We had to step on the money, the mix one extra. You know I had win and got extra. I am the muscle. I like to flex with the money. You know I could cover, no question. Ain't no discussion. He make a move, we gon' bust him. Fuck up, I'm cool with his cousin. I'm never ducking. Nigga, that had 50 boys, the only motherfuckers I'm ducking. We had to step on the money, the mix one extra. You know I had win and got extra. I am the muscle. I like to flex with the money. You know I could cover, no question. Ain't no discussion. He make a move, we gon' bust him. All right, guys. Welcome back to the Hawaii Tech Dynasty here on NCAA 14. We just finished our bowl game last episode. We beat the hell out of Penn State, 58 to 17. Our seniors went out with a bang. Um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we 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 were angry, man. Them not putting us in the natty, them hoeing us, not getting us in the natty, man. That made us just do this to Penn State. We came out with one mission in hand. You know what I'm saying? We got the two-time back-to-back coach of the year winner, uh, Colt Brennan. You know what I mean? He him and he's him in this program. With just the three stars we've been recruiting, worked hard to get to this point. And I feel like even though we might take a step back next year because we're losing some pieces, um, moving forward with the recruiting, improving with us being able to get four stars, I think things are going to get really, really real. All right, guys. So here at the end of the bowl season, Shelf Johnson is going to be our school's career receiving touchdown record holder. He's also going to be our school, our new school career receiving yards and a career record holder. Um, he blew Mike Cutler out of the water by, you know, almost a complete 900 yards. Jason Harris is now our school's receptions in a season record holder with 84. Trey Warfield is easily by far, I mean, he broke his own record, the school career passing touchdown record holder with 132. I don't think that's ever going to be topped. He's also the school career passing yards record holder with almost uh, 18 and a half thousand yards. May not ever be top. So we end the season as the number two team in the nation. Let's go ahead and take a look at the bowl results. We already know that we got that dub. Coming down here to the natty, Stanford loses to Nebraska by 10. Navy blows out Buffalo. Uh, let's see what else. Florida State beats uh, FAU barely. Georgia beats U UCF. Oklahoma State blows out LSU. We blow out Penn State. Florida loses to Ohio State. Al Al Alabama. Alabama loses by five. Wins by five against Michigan State. Tennessee gets blown out by Wisconsin. The NC State beats Temple barely. Auburn beats Miami. K-State loses to uh, Charlotte. North Carolina beats Cal. Texas A&M beats Pitt. So on, so on. Notre Dame lost to USC. USC probably had no business, you know, playing a team of that magnitude, like low of lower archy, but it is what it is. <clears throat> Final season stats for us, Trey Warfield, 4,923 yards, 334 for 517, 36 touchdowns, 18 picks, 378 yards a game, 64 completion percentage, 14 yards a, a throw, sack 17 yard times this season. Stunner Kelly, 85 carries for 266 yards, 12 touchdowns. Three for Warfield, three for Madley, two for Antonio Smith, three for our boy Jacob Irby. His first time scoring touchdowns in his whole career. Uh, that's a lie. He scored touchdowns in the very first season, but, you know what I mean, he never really played after that until now. Uh, Receiving-wise, Jason Harris, 84 catches, uh, 1,500 yards, 19 yards a catch, 13 touchdowns. Chef Johnson, also a 1,000-yard receiver, 64 catches with a 1,000 yards. Thunder Kelly, 48 catches for 23 touchdowns. 45 for 530 for Kevon King, his best season here in his career, completely turned up here in his, in his senior season. Mm. Alex Koontz, 34 catches, but made the most of them with 625 yards. Spratley, in his very, very limited season, 17 for 274. No touchdowns, sad. You know what I mean? Because take a look at all his other seasons. It's like, this was supposed to be his year coming off a 1,000-yard receiving season with 10 touchdowns. He was supposed to have all the stats that Harris has, but that's not the way the cookie crumbled. Ricky Green gave us 15 for 201 and three touchdowns. Madley Smith and Rivera all had one receiving touchdown as well. Blocking-wise... Kevon King looks like he led us in pancakes. He did with seven, five for Martinez, five for Munez, five for Lambert, five for Ball, four for Adderhawk. Uh, who gave up the most sacks? Ian Lambert, five, gave up five sacks. Moose Daniels gave up four. Uh, Miguel Martinez gave up three, one each for Smith and Munez. Defensively, LSR led us in tackles with 67 total, 64 solo. Paisley was 60 total, 58 solo, 51 and 50 for Hutchie, uh, 47 and 45 for Vervel. 
Um, let's see who had the most tackles for loss. No touchy to Hutchie. Did lead us there. 18 TFLs, three sacks. Juan Gomez, 14 TFLs, seven sacks, 11 and two for LSR, and a, a nine and two for Corn. We also had nine and six for Ryan Hernandez. <clears throat> Sack leaders, of course, Ryan, uh, Juan Gomez, Ryan Hernandez, No Touchy to Hutchie, BJ Brown and Braden Korn, LSR and Schmidt all tied with two. Pick leader, Uriah Rice is tied with Coco and Bauer with three apiece. Two for LSR, two for Paisley, one for Korn, Schmidt, and the, No Touchy to Hutchie. Um, a bunch of deflections, a.k.a. drop picks. Four forced fumbles as a team. Uh, six fumble recoveries. Most of his fumble recoveries are missed, missed kicks, missed punts, or whatever you want to say it. Uh, he, we also had two defensive touchdowns, one for Favelle, one for Paisley. Kicking wise, our true freshman, Jock Grande, only missed one kick this year. And I believe that was in when I super assumed the bowl game or the, the Fresno State game, which sucks. Almost went perfect. 50, he's perfect from uh, extra points, though. Uh, his longest kick of the season was, damn, did it say? Longest kick of the season was 34. Button wise, Andrew Robbins. 15, 15 attempts for 660 yards with a net yardage of 44. I mean, with an average of 44, net of 607. Um, he had one punt blocked. He got one inside the 20. He had one touchback, and his longest punt of the year was 50. Ryan Fravel, 1,000 yards again on the kick return with a touchdown this season. 236 yards on the punt return. Take a look at career numbers here. We pretty much already seen Warfields, but hundred. I mean, 153.3 QBR, not bad. 1160 for 1930, 800, 800, 340 yards, 132 touchdowns, 89 picks, 30, 346 yards a game, 60% completion percentage for a career, 16 yards per average completion, 80 was his longest of the year, sacked 96 times, that had to be brutal. Nobody on the ground is going to have that many crazy yards. Oh, actually, you know, these two are seniors. Uh, Warfield, 942 yards, 26 touchdowns. Madley, 961 yards, 27 touchdowns. Stunner Kelly, uh, well, he's new. For Vail, you know what I mean? He pretty much rushed that one season. Shove Johnson in his years here. 21 for 126, four touchdowns. And Irby, 7 for 11 for five touchdowns. Receiving-wise, uh, Shove Johnson, 258 receiving re receptions in the career. He's like eight off from beat from beating Mike Cutler for the for the career record. So he's second in the uh in the uh, program with that. <clears throat> 4,900 yards. Nobody's going to be close to that. Uh, Jason Harris, 28, 40, 54. Spratley, 28, 37. Shove Johnson easily has the lead for cat for touchdowns with 38. Spratley, 22. Harris, 19. Kevon King, 10. Most of his touchdowns were this season. The longest in, in career, Harris, is with 80. Shove with 79. Kevon King with 79. Yards per game in a career, Shove with 92.4. Yards after the catch, 1,100. 32 drops in his career. Ain't that about a beep? Um, Joe Spratley with 20. Harris with 17. King with 13. Moose Daniels, and as his career comes to a close, gave up 23 sacks in his career here in four years. Defensively, take a look at who had the most tackles. Well, this is the crazy thing. No Touchy to Hutchie in two seasons has more tackles than Vince Elisar had in four seasons here at the program. That's insane. That's That just goes to let you know how special this kid is, man. He's a special, special talent. Juan Gomez has 15 career sacks. Brandon Corn leaves here with 10. Ryan Hernandez has eight in just two seasons. LSR ends his career with five and a half. Abernathy has one more year to go, has five. No Touchy to Hutchie has five. Jay Coco leaves this program with 137 solo tackles, no sacks, 12 picks, uh, 12 deflections, one forced fumble, and no defensive touchdowns. Uh, Vince Ellisar leads here with 10 picks. We got all the rest of these guys that are still going to be around here for a while. School records. Trey Warfield holds every single passing record. No demand here at the school. Rush uh, Receiving wise, Shove Johnson has the touchdown career. Harris has touchdowns in the game. Shove has season, season touchdowns, career yards, game yards, season yards. Mike Cutler still has rece uh, career receptions. Uh, receptions in a game 14 uh, that's still you know somebody that's still not set Jason Harris you know what I mean has the most received receptions in a, a season defensively um, let's see nobody's close to that sacks in the career 30 nobody's close to that 
uh, sacks in the season. We got half of that. We already know we can't run the ball, so we literally have zero of our uh, rushing touchdown records. See if we have many guys with NCAA records. We do. Favell with fumble return, which that's not even possible. They, they That kind of glitched. They added his two fumble returns together one game. Uh, longest interception return is Paisley. Longest kick return is for Vail. We also have this longest pass uh, record set on us by Russell of UCLA, but we got the dub, so it doesn't matter. Warfield does leave. Warfield does lead the nation in uh, in passing yards this season, uh, nearing 5,000. We're 352nd in rushing yards. J J Jason Harris ended up leading the nation in receiving yards. Tackle leaders, pa LSR and Paisley are top two. Dehutchie is top five. Sack leaders, we're top 30. Pick leaders, we're top 185. So offense, total offensive yards, we are nowhere near the top. Um, that's total yards, but total offensive yards, yeah, we're not even in the top 10. As you see here, passing yards, we're going to be first, though. We led the nation in passing yards with 4,998. Rushing yards, I'm pretty sure we're dead last with 606. Points per game, we're top four. Passing touchdowns, we ended up being second. Rushing touchdowns, we're probably near the bottom. Well, we're just actually dead middle. Sacks allowed, we're top four, which is a good thing, which means we didn't allow that allow that many sacks. First downs, we're not at the top. We're not at the, bottom, at the bottom. At the bottom, we're right smack dab in the middle. Defensively, um, we gave up the least amount of yards. Um, let's see. Passing yards, we gave up right down the middle. Rushing yards allowed. We have the best rushing yards allowed. Average, we had the number one rush defense all season. We only gave up 1,261 yards all year. We gave up 248 points, which is the second least in the country. Whoa. This is easily, easily the best uh, the best defense we've ever had. We had 25 sacks uh, near the bottom. Fumble recoveries, we're probably going to be near the bottom. Picks, we're always going to be near the bottom. Take a look at who's going to be going up and down between the Pac-12 and the Mountain West. We finished as the number one squad in the Pac-12, so we are safe. Stanford is second. USC is third. Arizona and Utah will be going down to the Mountain West. And Air Force and BYU will be coming up to the Pac-12. Actually, yes, they will because they finished 7-2 in the conference. 8-5 and five total. But 7-2 in the conference, Air Force was 8-2 in the conference, 10-4 total. So Air Force and BYU will be coming to the Pac-12 for, again, Arizona and Utah. All right, boys, taking a look at Colt Brennan's best season as the head coach here. From 3-9 to 8-6 to 7-6 to 9-4 to now 12-1 in a Rose Bowl victory. We're 2-2 in two two bowl games. Uh, 9 and 11 versus top 25s. We're safe, of course. 39 to 26 in our total career here at uh, Hawaii Tech. And, uh, you know what I mean? 39 to 26 total of his career because it's the only place he's coached. Whoa! Guys, Tyler Hawkins leaves our program for a new job. And our offensive coordinator, Castle, finally leaves our program for a new job as well. We have our best season in team history. And both of our coordinators go to better their careers, which I'm not mad at. But, whoa, we have major coaching changes here going into season number six. Wow. So our offensive coordinator, Jeff Castle, leaves the program for to become the head coach at Cincy. Their coach, Coley, was fired. So let me go ahead and write that down because we got to put Cincy on the schedule. And Tyler Hawkins leaves to be that new head coach at East Carolina. So let me go ahead and add ECU. Wow. Congrats to our coaches, man. Congrats to them guys. Tyler Hawkins, one of the, one of the GOATs in the NCAA world. You know what I mean? One of the greatest safeties ever became a championship boxer. Jeff Castle, man. Yo, you 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 remain loyal because I thought you were going to leave last season with the season we had. But, hey, you know what I mean? You guys did your thing. Like, if you think about it, we had the number three uh, in, we had the number three defense in the, all the NCAA and the number one in the Pac-12. We only gave up 19, 19 points a game. Tyler Hawkins pretty much had to dip. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing, nothing left for him to do here, which, which kind of sucks. And as far as our offense, we've been ranked to the top in offense for a couple years now. We averaged 37 points a game. We were fourth in the NCAA and first in the Pac-12. Those guys had to go on and, uh, you know what I mean, and get their careers and get their careers, you know, on the up and up. But we're going to have to beat down on them schools. Now for the sad part of this video, all of our leaving players, nobody is going to be drafted. 
I'm not sure if I'm going to make a little montage or not yet. You know, that's not really my steez. That's other people's thing. I really don't do that like that. I mean, we've we seen for four years what these guys did. Jason Jason Harris, man, tough to see you go, man. I feel like he she should have got drafted after the season he put up. Trey Warfield, the, 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 the school leader in all things passing. Kevon King would definitely be a great next level tight end. Ben Munez, a little underwhelming here in his career, honestly. Honestly. Jay Coco, also a little bit underwhelming here in his career, for being honest. Only 12 career set, twelve career picks, but, you know, he played his role. Jacob Madley, you know what I mean? We, we chose to go with you over Ubio, and then we ended up, you know what I mean, not even using you. But we proved to Ubio he wasn't that good either when we played Fresno State. Mike Ball, kudos. Vista Elisar here in your senior season. The Bednarik and the Best Linebacker Award. You would get drafted off that, off GP. Moose Daniels is gone. J Joseph Spratley, only a 76 on paper, man, but I don't care. He, he plays way better than that. Shove Johnson, only a 76 on paper. He plays way better than that. Braden Korn, loved having you on the edge, man. Tim Jenkins, I don't think you ever played. Mike Miner, you were once a great starter. Jacob Irby, you you know what I mean? Never complained. Played well in the, first, in the two years that you played, freshman year and senior year. Uh, and Colton Shaw, once a starter, lost his spot, though. Never never moan, never complain. And you know what I mean? Came to work every single day. So, so long to our guys, man. I wish them all the best in their next career moves. Whether it be, you know what I'm saying, getting a job in, you know what I mean, whatever they study here at Hawaii Tech. Or if it is finding their way to the NFL via late round draft picks and or, you know, undrafted free agents. So taking a look at our new coordinators, one good thing is they're completely maxed out as far as all their traits. So I feel like our defense is going to get a little better as well as our offense. You know, James Coley and Derek Mason, appreciate having y'all here, man. One thing we're going to do this season, we usually do auto, but this is pretty much going to be auto. We're going to run whatever our, it is our coordinators have. So let's go ahead and uh, sort here by our team. We're going to get this out of the way early. Coach Mason... What kind of defense does he run? He runs a 3-4, so it looks like we're switching to the 3-4 this year. And Coach Coley, his offense is Alabama one back. Oh, my goodness. That is not the way I like to play, but we're going with the new coordinators. They're bringing in these new offense and a new defense, and that's what we got to run, man. Coach Philosophy. Let's go ahead and go to Alabama. Offense, never run their playbook before. Yes, I have. And then 3-4 base defense. That is our new offense and defense for the season. All right, boys, signing day is here. We have the number 44th ranked sign, uh, class in the nation. Take a look at our recruits. We got Harold, Schmidt, Cook, Mixon, Johnson, Young, Vaughn, Mueller, Hicks, Boyd, Harris, James, Ross, Jones, Young, Hollis, Burgess, Lane, Smith, and Elliott. Now, as you guys already know by now, I pretty much already – Probably put out the, um, you know what I mean, the, the community post asking for the recruits. Yeah. So since I already put the info down there, guys, you know, you can put it down in the description. I mean, in the uh, comment section right now. But just know the uh, positions are probably already filled going into the next season because I record these videos a lot in a row. Like, uh, I'm, I'm only at episode 51 right now being uploaded. And this is episode 60 that I'm currently recording. All right, boys, coming here to position changes, we have three athletes. First, we have Blake Hollis. Um, looks like he could be a running back or a receiver. Would be a 75 overall. Can he play DB? He could play safety, but most people can play safety. 92 speed, 90 excel. Do we put him in the backfield with Stunner Kelly? No, we just let Stunner Kelly. Nah, we just going to let Stunner Kelly do his thing. We do need more uh, receivers. To oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we recruited three receivers, but... Yeah, we definitely need speed and ability. So 75 overall receiver, go ahead. Then we got Mark Mixon next up. He is not an offensive uh, an offensive uh, athlete. Looks like he might be a good left or right end, which would be good because we got Braden Korn who just dipped up out of here. So let's see. Left end, we got Juan Gomez. Oh, yeah, we got... Uh, we got who's the who's the guy coming back? This is Colin Neeson. He's coming. He's coming to play this year. So we're gonna go ahead and move him to right end, even though he's probably gonna get red shirted. More than likely, gonna get red shirted. 
Right in, that's it, I believe. All right, right in, 69 overall. 5'10", 173, Chris Young. 83 speed, 79 excel. He's not fast whatsoever. He could be a receiver. Definitely not going to play DB for me. It looks like he's only a receiver, so we'll go ahead and make that happen, Captain. All right, boys, so at quarterback, we got Ty Robinson. We got M. Pitts, Bobby Harrell, Damian Winter, who's probably going to fall off, uh, you know what I mean, the good graces of, you know, next quarterback in line. We got Marcus Vaughn, and then we got Malcolm Tyree. Running back, we got Antonio Smith, Stunner Kelly, Chance Gunther, and uh, Carnage Clark. Fullback, we brought in Adam Burgess. Wide receivers, we got Blake Hollis, Ricky Green, Alex Kuntz, Mateo Griff, uh, Rivera, excuse me, Cam Cook, Marcus James, Billy Mueller, and Chris Young. So Blake Hollis looks like he's going to be our best receiver off rip, even with these guys training. He's going to get some playing time. Tight end, we ball in Derek Ross, and then we got Ethan Styles, left tackle, Caleb Bear, uh, left guard, we got uh, Lambert, Evans, Lane, and Bonham. Can any of these guys play left tackle? He goes to 65. He goes to a 74. Who we got over there already? Bear, he's going to train. So we'll go ahead and move Evans to left tackle because he goes to a 65. All right. Center, we got uh, Ryan Elliott. And then we got Seth King, right guard, Miguel Martinez, and Adderhalt, right tackle. We got uh, Ben Smith. So we're going to go ahead and move this left guard. We're going to move Bob Lane to right tackle. That way we can have two linemen at each position. Left in, we're really heavy there. Juan Gomez, but we're probably going to remove, remove. We're probably going to move Neeson to right end because Juan Gomez isn't losing his spot. But Neeson, you know what I mean? We redshirted him so he can come through and be that guy for us this season. Um, so I left in total. We got Gomez, Karan, or Karen, uh, Karan, London, Richardson, and then Rodney Hicks. Right in Neeson, Grove, Jones, Mixon, and Boer. The tackles, we got Ryan Hernandez, Delroy Vincent, uh, B.J. Brown, and Torres uh, Hampton. B.J. Brown might get that now over Delroy Vincent this season. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, he played well. He was a fr freshman All-American. We might want to build off that. Left house on linebacker. Still Gary Abernathy starting. Followed by Dink Steves, Matthew Cromer, Marcus Marshall. Middle linebacker Ace Smith is going to start step into the starting role with Travis Payton, Lars Lazarus Hennessy, and then we got the freshman Melvin Harris. Right outside linebackers, no touchy to Hutchie. That's his spot all day. Nobody's taking that. Lewis Samoa and then Olin Edwards. Cornerbacks. Uriah Rice is now our number one guy. Nate Mayfield is coming fresh off of a red shirt. Donnie Schmidt, you know what I mean? Um, he's stepping in to take over from Tyler Schmidt, even though Tyler Schmidt is going to train. Champ Johnson was okay last year. Kellen Boyd is more than likely going to red shirt. Then we got Limpuma. J.J. Conley still hanging around. And then Kenny Davison. Uh, Ryan Fravel, you know what I mean? Easy, the starting free safety. Followed by Lucas Corona, who I might – Want to see how he plays at, at linebacker because he'll train. He could possibly play. I'm going to put him at middle linebacker. Or do I want to put... What if I put Bauer at middle linebacker? He would be horrible at middle linebacker. So, yeah, Corona's like the only safety we have that will actually thrive at linebacker, in my opinion. We'll go ahead and move you to middle linebacker because it's your senior season. I want to try to get you on the field. So, we got Fravel, Ray, Arias, and the newcomer, Jeremy Johnson. Strong safety, we got Ryan Paisley, followed by Bauer who I can probably just put at, back at cornerback here in his senior season. He doesn't really need to be Paisley's backup. Damn, but he's better at safety. But he'll probably still get some burn at corner. No, but he'll train, though. So, Bauer, you played you play cornerback number two pretty much all season last year. So, let's go ahead and move you back to corner, Shane Bauer, sir. So, at strong safety, we got Paisley, Young, and Tate. Grande still our kicker. Andrew Robbins is now in his senior year for a punter. We're going to need a new one of those. And this is the squad, man. Our best player is an 84 overall, Ty Robinson. Oh, my goodness. It is his show this year as a senior. All right, boys, training results. Ty Robinson goes up five points. He's an 89 overall. 99 awareness. Let's see. 83 throw power, 90 throw accuracy. A lot stronger arm than what uh, Warfield had. Uh, let's see. So we got Ty Robinson, Damian Winter, Malcolm Tyree. Stunner Kelly goes up five points, and he overtakes Antonio Smith for the number one guy with his 93 speed. He's now a 90 Excel. Antonio Smith is a 90 Excel, but he has that 82 strength. He's going to be have to be our bruising back. He's going to be our goal line back coming into this year. 
Wide receiver Ricky Green gets plus five. Mateo uh, Rivera gets plus six. Kuntz gets plus four. I think Kuntz is going to be number my number one guy. 95 speed, 90 excel. He could work in a slot too, but I like what he did last season. Uh, Mateo has to be on the outside at 6'5". Tied in, Ethan Styles gets plus five. Bear gets plus five. Evan gets plus five. Lambert gets plus six. He's at 80. Bonham gets plus five. King, Seth King, plus six, 72. Plus six to uh, Martinez, 78, 75, 76 for Adderhalt, plus five. Right tackles, we all freshmen. Juan Gomez gets plus five and is at 80 coming into his senior year. Karan gets five. Richardson gets five. Neeson gets five. He's a 79 overall redshirt junior. Uh, Grove gets plus four. Borg gets plus five. Ryan Hernandez gets plus six, and he's at 80 for his junior year. Followed by Delroy Vincent and BJ Brown. Man, I really don't know who I want to play here. BJ Brown played well, but Delroy, you know what I mean? We're going to see what you can do. Get, uh, Gary Abernathy, 78 for his senior year. Steez is 77. Cromer, 74. 69 for Marshall. And Ace Smith is a plus 576. Uh, Peyton gets plus 575. 74 overall for Hennessy. Corona is a 74. But let's see. Corona might still get some playing time here at linebacker. You just never know. The Hutchie is at 83 here in his junior year with a plus five. Samoa gets plus five. Everett's gets plus four. I wish my watch would leave me alone. Uriah Rice plus six, 79 overall. Plus five to Bowrat corner, 74. Clear, clear cornerback number two. Mayfield gets a plus four. He's a 95 speed. I love it. <clears throat> so do we keep him in the slot or do we move Bauer to the slot? Schmidt is a plus five, 73, 90 speed. Champ Johnson, 93 speed. Lampuma gets plus four, plus four to Connolly, plus six to Davidson. Free safety for Vegas, plus five. He's an 84 overall senior. Plus four to Allen Ray, uh, plus five to Arias, plus five to Paisley, plus five to Tate. We get a plus five to Grande. Does his leg get any pluses? Plus five kick accuracy. That's what I'm talking about. 73 overall kick accuracy. I mean, kick power. Plus five to uh, Andrew Robbins. His kick power is at 85. He actually might be the one kicking our field goals this year. All right, boys. So, time to move. Time for the call-ups and the send-downs. We got Utah and Arizona going to the Mountain West for BYU and Air Force. If I'm not mistaken, Air Force has been up here before, but they got their butts beat back down. But, you know what I mean? That's how it goes. We People get called up and, sit, and sent down. All right, so preseason, once again, we are unranked. What do we have to do to get some respect here in this college football world, man, in this universe? Oh, my goodness. No. <laughs> All right, boys, so we were able to get both – um, East Carolina and Cincy on our schedule. So right now, this is what the schedule is looking at, looking like. We host East Carolina, and then we're going to Houston. Then we're uh, hosting Cincy. Then we got the uh, neutral site game at MetLife Stadium versus Hawaii. We got a bye. Then we got Fresno State and Ubio, Washington, Oregon, USC, UCLA, Arizona State, BYU, and Air Force. <clears throat> this is what the depth chart is looking like right now. We got Ty Robinson, Damian Winter, Malcolm Tyree. Those are our, our one, two, three QBs. Running back, Stunner, Stunner Kelly, Antonio Smith. Definitely going to try to find a way to get both of those guys in there. Then we got Chance Gunther, Carnage Clark. Adam Burris, Burgess is our fullback. Ricky Green, Mateo Rivera, and Alex Kuntz is slipping. Nah, what I'm going to do, I'd rather put Kuntz in at the two and let Mateo be the four. He's 6'5", 211, but he's only 83 speed, 79 excel. We're over that whole lack of speed thing. He does have great catching at 86. You know what I mean? Good spec catch. Route running is at 87. Oh, man. So, maybe. But we'll see how it goes because I'd like to have speed on the, on, on, on the court. I'd like to have speed on the floor. And I often come out with a four wide receiver set, so Rivera should get some looks. Ethan Styles is our, is our, is our starting court tight end, followed by Derrick Ross. We got Barrett left tackle, Lambert at left guard, King at center. Pardon me. Got Miguel Martinez at right guard. And we got a true freshman Ben Smith at right tackle. Not really sure how I feel about that. Actually, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and rock out where Adderhalt. He's just a better guy. So what we're going to do from there, we're going to go ahead and red, red shirt Ben Smith. 
Juan Gomez, of course, is a left starting left tackle. We got Colin Neeson starting right in, right in, and left in, excuse me. Ryan Hernandez is the top uh, D tackle, followed by Delroy Vincent and B.J. Brown. Still don't know if I'm going to start B.J. Brown over Delroy Vincent or not. I'm, I'm thinking about it just because, you know what I mean? His one season, seven tackles, four for loss, two sacks. Oh, he had 18 tackles his first. Uh, all right. Last season, he didn't really play. So, okay. We'll let Delroy rock out. Um, Gary Abernathy, he's starting left in still. He's been doing a hell of a job. A. Smith and Dank Steves are starting middle linebackers. Oh, yeah, because we're in the 3-4 this year. Whoa, that's going to be huge. Okay. Uh, no touchy to Hutchie, of course, to start right tackle. So, Deborah Vincent ain't going to get no burn. Where your right, right, Shane Bauer, Nate Mayfield, Tyler Schmidt are going to be our starting corners. True freshman Tyler Schmidt. I've thought about redshirting him, but we're going to let him play just because when we play nickel and dime. Ryan Fravail starting for free safety, followed by Allen Ray. Ryan Paisley, followed by Allen Ray. Damn, excuse me. Damn, I'm sleepy, bro. Grande's the kicker. Robbins the punter. But I might put Robbins as the kicker just because he has the better leg. So for right now, we'll rock out with it like that. Kick return. For Vail, has got to be the number one guy. He's won three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back, uh, returners of the year. So I really don't see why we wouldn't have him there. Nate Mayfield doesn't have the ability to excel. But let's see, who has the best excel? For Vail, of course, then Alan Ray. So we'll put Alan Ray back there. And then punt return, we'll have for Vail as well, followed by Alan Ray. I like to have wheels, baby. People who can get zero to 60 real fast. Robbins is doing the kickoffs. Long stackers, Ian, long snappers, Ian Lambert. And I'm just really eager to see what Ty Robinson can do this year. He's He's less athletic than Trey Warfield, and that's saying a lot because Trey Warfield wasn't that athletic, but this is finally his year. Five years later, he is finally getting the opportunity to start here at the program. So can't wait to see what is going to come from it. Another thing I'm going to allow us to do this season is recruit because now that we've won uh, big games, we're in a major conference, I feel like we would officially finally have the funding to be able to travel around and scout players and everything like that. So Martin Merville is a bust. Ugh, yuck. Get him off my board. Kevin Robertson, decent. Clay Daniels, okay. Billy Davis, ooh, what is he? Juke move, is he a running back? Or is he a receiver? Where's his carrying? I'm retarded, where's carrying? His carrying's only 63, so he's probably a receiver. Okay, Billy Davis, I like it, I like it. Chester Blair. 94 speed. I'm keeping you on the board. Jeremy Williams. Okay. Cameron Gibson. All right. Not a bad QB prospect. Mike Newby. 74. Doug Jansen. Is what we thought he was. John Finley. 69. I'm not, I'm not recruiting a 58. Not at this point of our career. Uh, let's see. Randy Johnson. I can get bougie now a little bit. Scott Floyd. Decent. Shannon Ewing. Not a bad corner. Nick Graves, decent. Daryl Miller, plus five. Okay, another athlete, Doug Frank. Mm, he's probably, yeah, he's a, D, he's a D lineman or a linebacker. More than likely a D lineman, honestly. Oh, yeah, D, D in probably if I had to guess. All right, boys, so coming into season number six, we have four preseason All-Americans. We have 10 preseason All-Conference, and we did find one bust recruit. Also, the preseason polls coming into this year, got Nebraska, Georgia, Penn State, Michigan State, USC, Oklahoma State, Bama, Oklahoma, Stanford, Texas A&M, Ohio State, Arizona, Miami, North Carolina, Washington, LSU, Auburn, FAU, Florida, Florida State, Wisconsin, TCU, Georgia Tech, Houston, and Oregon, and we are all the way down at 35. We improved, but our defense got better. Our defense is a B minus. Uh, our offense, I think, was a B last year. No, it was a C. It was a C plus. So, not that bad. We are officially a five star prestige. We're only a seventy nine overall, seventy nine offense, eighty defense. We should be ranked after like our first couple games, honestly. Because, uh, but it, it's, it's going to be rough, man. We might have to rely a little more heavily on the run game this year. I don't really know if I believe in Ty Robinson like that. Uh, Heisman watch list to come into the year. We got Will Collins of Oregon, Marcus Johnson of uh, ASU, 
Kenneth Good of Penn State, we made him look bad last game, pun intended. Kent Bowman from Florida and Mike Vaughn from Clemson. Conference outlook, they got us finishing fourth in the South Haters, and then they got us finishing middle of the pack at number eight in the total conference. They got Fresno State and Wyoming going down to the Mountain West. So preseason All-Americans, Ryan Hernandez, my boy. Ryan Favell, Ryan Paisley, they, they hoeing no touchy to hutchy. Second team, All-American preseason, Shane Bauer. Still no touchy to hutchy. No touchy to hutchy, got to go off this season. Preseason All-Conference, Gomez, Hernandez, the hutchy, Bauer, Favell, Paisley, which is a good sign that all of our, most of our accolades are by our defensive players. Then Stunner Kelly is second team all uh, Pac-12 with uh, Felipe Ubio. Okay, man. So we get to play him again to see what's really what. He uh, almost rushed for 1,200 yards last year. You see his first two seasons with us. You know what I mean? It wasn't really, you know what I mean? And that's why he left in 2017. He had to sit out in 2018. We got uh, B.J. Brown, preseason all-conference, Uriah Rice. And then we got our boy Jock Grande. So B.J. Brown might have to get that nod over Delroy Vincent, man. Preseason all-conference, uh, you got to love to see it. And all right, guys, so we're ready for season number six. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get all you guys' names in here. I'm going to get the recording like I did season five. And we're going to breeze through these things, man. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you're excited for the season. And once again, if your player does not get picked, do not be discouraged. There's always next season. The only way to guarantee that you will be a recruit is if you were a JV sponsor or above. JV sponsor or above. Freshman sponsors do not get priority when it comes to making a recruit. That's just the FYI. I mean, it is in the sponsorship uh, level uh, descriptions, but you know what I mean? We're ready to run it up, man. So hopefully you enjoy. If you did, stop and smash that like button. Hit me up in the comment section below. Subscribe if you're new. It's your boy, Uncle Sam's Reject at ArcadeGames.com. I'm out of here. Peace. Letting you go, I was just letting you know I know the weather is cold, but you on your own I ain't no regular Joe, you should've left me alone I'm in the zone, I'm where the predators roam We at the Senate in Rome, and I'm on the throne This ain't no regular poem, this ain't that regular tone, no Do you follow me, baby?